can you transplant beard hair or body hair to the scalp? Believe it or not, this is a question that I often get asked. And it's because people who have severe hair loss are concerned that they might not have enough donor supply. So together we're going to explore what a body hair transplant entails and who an ideal candidate is. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Ross Kopelman. I'm a hair transplant surgeon. And my mission on this channel is to educate you so that you can get the best results from your hair transplant. So keep watching, hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. So body hair transplants are exactly what they sound like. We are taking hair from non-scalp areas of the body and transplanting it to the scalp. Typically, at the top of the list is taking hair from the beard, followed by the chest, the abdomen, the back, and then the legs. The beard is the best place because the survival from these follicular units is 80 to 90%, and the hair is coarse and it grows thick and long. Then, that's followed by the chest. The chest, though, has these singular units that are very, very thin, and their survival is lower. It's about 70%, and they're not as thick, and they don't provide the same density that you would get using beard hair. Now, regardless of where you take the body hair from, that body hair is never used in a hairline. Why? Because the hairline needs really beautiful singles that you can only take from the back of the scalp or the sides of the scalp. And so when we use body hair, what we like to do with the body hair is we mix it with some of the scalp hair that we extract from the back and we use it in the mid scalp and the crown. If we were to just use, let's say, beard hair in the crown or chest hair in the crown, it wouldn't look natural. The other thing you have to understand is that the hair on our face, our chest, our back, and our legs grow at a different rate than our scalp hair. And so you have to understand that it's not going to be a perfect match. And that's why it's very critically important to mix these follicular units together. The other thing that you should understand is when we extract hair from the beard, from the chest, wherever we take the body hair from, it typically is hair that's one follicle or two follicles. We don't get a lot of threes or fours. So it's a lot more challenging to handle body hair. And sometimes even extracting body hair can have its challenges because we might end up transecting body hair much, much more easily than we do with the scalp. So now that you understand what a body hair transplant entails, why are we using body hair to start? Well, that's a great question. The first thing that you must understand is that we have a finite supply of hair back here. We do not want to take more than 4,000 to 5,000 hair grafts in your lifetime. But if you are someone who has very severe hair loss, a Norwood four to seven, well, you might not have enough hair back here to do full coverage. It's also possible that you had an FUT procedure performed or you had an FUE procedure where there was too much harvesting that caused the complication and you ran out of donor supply in the back of the scalp. In that case, we're going to need to use body hair to camouflage that FUT scar or that over harvested FUE area. And the other thing that is important for you to understand is who is the ideal candidate? If you're in your 20s or your early 30s, you're not an ideal candidate for a body hair transplant. And that's because hair loss is progressive. We have to think about what is your hair loss gonna look like in your 40s, your 50s, and your 60s. Ideally, someone who is mid 30s and up, who has stable hair loss, who's been on hair loss medications for quite a while, that would be an ideal candidate to explore a body hair transplant. And ideally, we would start by using beard hair if you have beard hair. Then we would think about using chest hair. But body hair transplants are not for everyone. If you are a young male in your 20s or 30s, I would be very, very cautious about using beard hair or body hair at this stage because we don't know how your hair loss is going to progress. For younger patients, I always advise a much smaller hair transplant to start before we become more aggressive to do more coverage of your hair loss. Performing a hair transplant where we take hair from the body and we place it on the scalp can be transformative, especially if you have a Norwood five, six, or seven pattern. And that's because we can take thousands of grafts from the body. But remember, the survival rate is not as good as scalp hair. Now, in terms of recovery, if we take hair from underneath the beard or the chest, recovery is pretty seamless. What's important is that not too much hair is removed from both areas because there is a possibility for you to develop some hypopigmented areas and you wanna still be able to camouflage that with hair from underneath your chin 
and from your chest. If punch sizes are used that are too big, and typically we like to use punch sizes that range from 0.8 millimeters to one millimeter, but if they're bigger than one millimeter, you can absolutely expect that you're going to get visible hypopigmented areas, either on your chest, your abdomen, or underneath your chin. So that's critically important that your hair surgeon is using the appropriate punch size, otherwise you're absolutely going to have a complication. But overall, the recovery from a body hair transplant is pretty simple, and you typically get a complete resolution of any redness underneath the beard or the chest within a couple of days. And so the thing that you have to really understand when you go for a hair transplant, that hair that's transplanted from the body to the scalp, it's like planting seeds, like tulips. The leaves are going to fall out about three weeks later and you have to be patient. It takes anywhere from six to nine months to see the hair grow in and up to a year for the final result. I'm excited for how I use body hair to help more of my patients cover more of their hair loss. But it's important for you to understand the pros and cons so that you can figure out whether it makes sense to incorporate body hair when you go for your hair transplant. If you have any questions that I've not addressed about body hair transplants, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I'm here on your journey to help you address your hair loss.